Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how to set up WordPress on a cloud platform. So WordPress is a hugely popular content management system that they estimate about 30% of all websites online are actually hosted on some sort of WordPress instance. So it's such a good idea to learn how to do this if you plan on working in like a data center or even just for personal use. You want to set up your own blog or maybe just publish some information about a hobby. So if you want to do anything like that and you want to find a really easy, cheap way to do this, then I'm going to show you how to do this on Amazon Web Services using such an easy service that just within a few clicks you're able to deploy a full WordPress instance ready to start writing your content and it will only cost you $3.50 a month. So check it out. It's called Light Sale and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So just we'll keep watching. What you want to do is go ahead and go log into an AWS account. If you don't have one, make it. It's free. They have tons of free stuff for a year within a limit, of course. And it's really great. You can experiment with a bunch of different resources. So specifically, we're gonna be looking at the light sale resource today. It's listed under compute. It's probably one of the easiest ways to get started in AWS without having to need a lot of cloud experience. So we're gonna be looking at the instance to create a light sale instance now this instance will give you tons of options actually. It gives you stuff that's pre-configured like WordPress or LAMP server or running Joomla or stuff like Drupal which are great kind of, or you could just select an OS. So those are kind of options. So if you just want to try out a Linux operating system on the command line that's awesome. You could go ahead and select that. Today I'm doing WordPress but you could just as easily create a Linux instance to get started. And they give you a few different options here. If you want to try a Windows system, let's say you want to run some Windows software on your Mac laptop at home, but maybe you don't want to run it on your local computer, this is actually a great option to run a full Windows environment and install software if you need. So tons and tons of options here, um, depending you know on what you need. So today I'm just going to do the WordPress, so let's go ahead and check that out. I like the region, so I want it close to where I am in the United States, but wherever you are in the world, you could select a region close to you. And the reason you want to do that because it will respond faster. It's less uh, let network latency to access your instance versus, you know, if you put it halfway around the world. So there's some options here if you want to run a script. If you want to log in, you probably want to want some SSH keys. So definitely click on that if you want keys. But I'm going to use the um, web interface to connect, and I'll show you what that means. So here you have the instant plans, and it lays out the pricing really easily for you. So if you want something with more processing power, or more memory or more storage. You kind of outlined it here depending on what you want. Now, if you're just trying out for experimental purposes, you know, you don't need to necessarily um, get 32 gigs of memory, obviously, like you, the system won't need it. So you probably want to just use the or allocate the capacity you think you'll actually use. Um, and if you're just trying this out, you could always upgrade and add instances later. This in light sale service has automatic um, we call auto scaling and load balancer in front of it. So you put a load balancer in here. You can do some auto scaling by choosing maybe, I'm only going to choose one instance to start off with, but you could choose two, you could choose four, and you can always change it in the future. So that's a great options here. So if you want a huge amount of storage, so lots of different ways you can configure environment with a very clearly defined price. So there won't be any surprises. Cause I know I worked in AWS for a while and every once in a while these prices sneak up on you, you your, your billing gets sneaks up and you don't know what happened. So this is a great way of very clear cut um, billing. So I'm gonna go ahead and name my instance. I'm gonna call it my blog. I only want one, but obviously you can choose more. So if you're starting out, choose the one and then later on, um, if more traffic starts coming to your site, then you could always um, go back and change the number of instances here. And then once I'm ready, I could go ahead and create my instance. You could add tags. If you have a lot of instances you start creating with Light Cell, you could always tag it. It helps sort and organize them. So that's something you think about. But you have just the one. There's um, the tags are, tags are kind of optional, so it's going to go ahead and create it. Give it a good like five, you know, ten minutes just to fully deploy the OS and the WordPress um, setup in your new instance. And this is like, going to be like a Linux operating system. So, so just give it a few minutes. You can go get a cup of coffee and come back. And right here, it'll start saying running. Um, you still want to give it a couple of minutes after it even says running. 
because it still has to configure for more things and boot up. But right here, you kind of see you get an IP address. This IP address is a dynamic IP address. You keep this IP address as long as it doesn't turn off. As long as you don't um, put your instance to sleep, there's no reason, or stop it, there's no reason that IP address will change. So if you um, want a static IP address, I'll show you that in a bit. But that's actually a separate fee, just so you know. But if you don't restart it and you're just trying out, you, maybe you don't need a static IP address. You could just look up the IP address in case it changes. So if you start too soon, you might get a message like this that's not able to connect. So I'm going to try to wait a few more minutes, and then I'm going to connect. So once I connect, I'll show you how to access your WordPress instance, and then we're going to go over how to actually connect a static IP address to this instance, and then a little bit on setting up a domain name. So if you're going to want to, you know, maybe start advertising your blog or your WordPress site, then some things we can do. So I connect to it. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to get the WordPress um, password to log in. So the way that's done is this command, it's cat and then bitnami application password. It's exactly like this with the underscore and it's case sensitive. So make sure, pause the video, type it in. So here is my password I'm going to use for my new WordPress site. The user for this is just um, user. So that's kind of just in the documentation. That's the way you can find it. Um, so what we're going to do here is go back to our URL. So you can actually highlight this and you can right click and copy it just to save yourself some time typing it in. Now what we're going to do is go to that IP address, this um, temporary dynamic IP address. We can click go to and here is our WordPress site. So right now, obviously, it's empty. You just have to add content to your WordPress site. But if you click on the corner where it says Manage, and there's going to be a login. It says Login to Admin Console there. It's right in the middle. And the username is going to be User and the password we just got from the console. It could just be pasted right in there, and then we click Login. So now you default logged in as admin into your WordPress instance, and then you could create all your pages and customize your WordPress instance any way you want. Um, you have full control over this setup. In addition to that, if you ever want to log into the Linux OS to actually do further customizations, you can do that by SSHing in. So that's another option as well. So if you want to update your WordPress or anything. So next we're going to look at creating a static IP. So now they make it really easy. You go to networking, you click static IP, then you kind of come down here. I'm going to name my static IP just so I could, if I ever want to change it or delete it, I could easily refer it. So I'm going to say it's my blog static IP. And now I have a static, the static IP address is different than the dynamic IP address that we had just a short minute ago. So now make sure you go to this new static IP address to view your blog. And the next option you have is actually creating a domain name. The name names usually run from like $3 to like $12, and you can create that in AWS using their Route 53 service. So right here, it says if you don't have a domain name registered, use Route 53. So I'm just going to show you, for example, like I have a domain name registered, but I'm just showing you this um, domain name. So it says myamazingblog.com, which it actually is, is actually available. But I actually have one, this admin girl I pay for. So now, since I have this already paid for, and you could easily do this and register one too, I'm going to go ahead and enter the domain I actually have registered. And then it'll allow me to easily create a records or entries in this domain. So this will allow me to say if I want www.sysadmingirl or just sysadmingirl.com to go to my blog. So I'm going to go ahead and in light sale, I'm going to create this DNS zone. Now I'm going to add two records and the records will allow me to point www.sysadmingirl.com to the blog as well as what's called the naked um, record which is just sysadmingirl.com. So I'm going to click on add record. Under subdomain I'm going to put in www and select my static IP address. So they made it really easy with these kind of like fill in and auto fills a lot of this information. I'm going to do www and I just check it and the next one is I'm going to go ahead and add um, the naked and in this case they actually ask you to put in an ad symbol 
So when you do this, you're going to click on, and you do multiple, right? So if, for example, you can set up other instances with other sub domains. So I'm just going to put at, and then same thing, same IP address. So it's very common to have this if you want like www and the naked domain to actually point to the, the same site. So now if I go to www.sysadmin, www.sysadmingirl.com, my blog is there. So I'm all ready to start publishing content to the world. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave it below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Subscribe to get updates. Bye.